everyone, it's Brad from RoboFlow, and today we're going to be talking about OpenAI's Clip Model, which I think is going to go down as 2021's most important contribution to the field of computer vision. So without further ado, let's dive in and learn about what Clip is, what makes it so special, and all of the ways in which it's already being used. So Clip is a multimodal model, which means it spans two different realms, the realm of text and the realm of imagery. And it's able to map between those really effectively, which allows it to do a whole bunch of really powerful things. It was trained across the entire internet by looking for text and image pairs and learning the mapping between them. Uh, to understand how that makes it different, uh, let's look at an analogy comparing CLIP to traditional supervised image classifiers. So in a traditional image classifier, we actually discard all of the information about the labels and we usually use numeric representations for them. So you can imagine this kind of like you hired a secretary to organize all of your files, but you, one, hired an illiterate secretary that can't read, and two, didn't label the folders that you were going to have him or her place those documents into. This is completely crazy. Uh, the, the secretary is gonna have to learn through trial and error what the folders are and the ways to put the documents in them. You know, they might infer that um, yellowed and brittle documents might go in a different folder from red, white crisp documents, um, but this is going to take them a lot of time to figure out. By contrast, Clip has a whole bunch of information at its disposal. Namely, it knows information about imagery, so in this analogy, it knows how to read, and also we're giving it the information about the different buckets for it to use uh, when placing the documents inside of them. So in this case, we told them not just these are a bunch of uh, generic folders to put things in, but we want to categorize these documents by the decade. Uh, and because this person knows how to read, they might be able to find those matching gears inside of the documents. Um, so essentially, this is giving it superpowers where it doesn't have to do millions of iterations of trial and error in order to figure out how to split up our images the way that we expect it to. It can actually use abstractions and knowledge that it's gained already uh, to do things without having to be specifically trained for that one task. And this is called zero-shot learning. So let's look at how CLIP is being used. The, the first one use case is image classification. So this is what we already talked about. Um, because it kind of has some abstraction and some knowledge of what text is and what images are, you can actually give it text and it will um, be able to tell you does this image that I'm looking at match up with that text description? And so let's say we're trying to find uh, you know, the difference between guacamole and ceviche. In a traditional image classifier, we'd have to have a data set and show it hundreds of examples of each guacamole and ceviche, and it would have to learn what the, the qualities of that image were that represented guacamole and ceviche. Um, you know, Maybe guacamole is a bit green and yellow, and I don't even know what ceviche looks like, but it presumably looks different from that. Um, and over time, it would trial and error, fi figure out um, how to differentiate between those. Clip, by contrast, um, has already seen pictures of guac guacamole and ceviche, uh, and it can um, extract its knowledge of those different concepts. Uh, and without being specifically trained for this task, it gets it right, right out of the box. So the trick with Clip is you just kind of have to ask it in the right way, um, which is called prompt engineering. Um, and you can get really good results on image classification. But that's not all it can do. Um, Clip can also do image generation. Well, not by itself, but when combined with something else. And so if you've been seeing uh, all these AI-generated art um, exhibitions on Twitter, um, most of them are generated by a model called Clip plus VQGAN. And the way that it works is it takes a GAN, a generative adversarial network, um, which starts out spitting out random noise, and it uses Clip to steer it in the direction that looks most like the text prompt that you gave it. And so over, over lots of periods of time, uh, it slowly and gets closer and closer and closer to the thing that you're looking at, as judged by Clip. And so this is an example of steering towards a rab uh, raccoon driving a tractor. Uh, it started out as random noise, um, but as it kind of perturbed a little bit, bit by bit, Clip told it, okay, this direction looks a little bit more like there's some fur, or this direction looks a little bit more like there's a tractor. And over time, it eventually got to this, which is 
you know, not perfect, but pretty great. I can see tractor elements there and I can see raccoon elements there. Um, so another thing that Clip can do is content moderation. So we actually created a game uh, where we let users of the internet draw pictures. And you can imagine that the first thing that they started doing was drawing inappropriate pictures. Uh, before the, the world of Clip, we would have had to train a specific image classifier on a whole bunch of different ways that people can create not safe for work images. But with Clip, we were able to just say, hey, is this image not safe for work? If so, we put it behind a censored flag. Uh, and if not, we let it through. Uh, and so without having to collect a whole bunch of training data and train a model, we just asked Clip, is this not safe for work? And it was able to perform that out of the box, um, which is the great part about a zero shot uh, image classifier. Uh, another thing that you can do with Clip is image search. Um, so because Clip can tell you uh, how closely an image matches a piece of text, um, that's really the definition of search is you just get a whole bunch of images, which might be your photo library, or it might be all of the images on the internet potentially, uh, and you can search for a string of text and it will return back um, you know, how close each image is to that, that thing that you're looking for, which is basically the definition of a search engine. So here a user has created uh, our clip, which is a uh, command line search tool that will go through all of your images and search for a term. And it doesn't have to be something that, that the model already knows. It can be something really weird like uh, kitten and jeans uh, and clip will be able to extract knowledge about that and perform well on any search string that you give it. So along those same lines, another thing that it's great at is telling you how similar two images are to each other. Uh, and you may have seen in the news, uh, this is actually exactly what Apple's neural hash model is supposed to do. They got in hot water because of the way that they're using it on users' phones. Um, but the technology behind it is actually really interesting. So this uh, image, uh, these two images were compared with a uh, neural network-based hashing algorithm, which um, we wrote a post about how you can use Clip to do exactly this and compared against each other to see how similar they were. And you can see it returned back that they were exactly the same uh, semantically, even though there's these watermarks that are different amongst them. Um, so this could be used for all sorts of really neat things um, like deduplicating your photo library um, or finding copyright violations of people who stole your image and slightly modified it and put it on the web um, or all sorts of different things. Um, but Clip can do this right out of the box um, because it knows about the contents of images, not just the pixels inside of them. You can also use this not just in a binary fashion, um, but in a way that uh, ranks things um, top to bottom by how close they are to a prompt. So we created a whole game around this where we let Clip judge uh, user-generated content to tell us how close it was to a professional drawing of the thing that they were supposed to draw. And by asking it that, um, we got some cool results. So here's a uh, prompt where we asked our users to draw Deadpool pretending to be a bunny. And then we asked Clip, how close are these drawings to a professional drawing of Deadpool pretending to be a bunny rabbit? And it was able to give us not only um, semantically matching things where you know the person actually drew what they were supposed to be drawing and it looks like that thing, but also high quality things. So here was the number one drawing. Uh, and if I scroll down the leaderboard to uh, number 43, you can see, you know, this is, you can kind of see that it's Deadpool. It's a, you know, red thing and he's, it's a person trying to be a rabbit with the ears, but the quality of it is pretty low. Um, and that was what we asked Clip to differentiate was both, is this the thing and is this a good image? And then if you scroll even farther down the leaderboard, so that last one was number 43 out of 98 submissions, um, towards the bottom, uh, at number 76, you see this, which is neither a good drawing nor something that represents Deadpool pretending to be a bunny rabbit. Uh, and so Clip was able to rank these really well um, based on our um, criteria, which was just um, a string, uh, a, a piece of text describing what we wanted it to rank by. Um, so we were able to build this game in a weekend, which wouldn't have even been possible a year ago. Um, so another use case that Clip can be used for is object tracking. So this is actually something that we came out with last week, um, which uses Clip to identify is are two instances of a object the exact same object or different instances of that object. So here you can see this is fish number three, and it follows fish number three all the way throughout the video. 
And the way that this works is by um, running it through Clip and getting a uh, digital representation of that particular box and then comparing it uh, on the next frame to uh, a digital representation from Clip of that same box and seeing how much it changed. And since Clip has all sorts of um, sort of generic ways of describing things or understanding things, um, it knows that some of these uh, fish are bigger and smaller, some are pointing in a slightly different direction. Um, it has internal ways of representing sort of the sunlight hitting, hitting them from different directions um, and that sort of thing. Um, and those all filter through in the same way that we had that image similarity listing above. Um, basically here we're doing image similarity of parts of an image and it lets us track individual instances across uh, a video, which previously you would have had to do in a painstaking manner um, by training a custom classifier. But with Clip, um, this is just a matter of feeding, feeding those little boxes through Clip and using the result as uh, the way to differentiate between different instances. So there's some other things that are coming down the pipeline um, that are gonna be further innovations, all powered by Clip. Uh, and I wanna talk about a couple of them. So one is fine tuning. So Clip is really good at all the things that it knows about, but there's some things that it just can't possibly know about. For example, uh, one thing that I was curious about was um, these drawings that were made by Clip plus VQGAN, uh, trying to uh, basically use Clip itself to evaluate those. And because Clip doesn't know anything about them from its training data, I wasn't able to extract much uh, valuable information about them. Um, but you can imagine that if you fed a couple more, a couple hundred of those in, you could take the base knowledge that Clip has from scanning the entire internet, add a little bit, teach it a little bit more about some other subject um, or something very specific like, you know, uh, microchip X-rays, uh, and get some more useful information out of it about realms, about areas of it knowledge that aren't already embedded inside of it. So this is an area to watch um, that could be really interesting over the coming year. Next is object detection. Um, so it's not a matter of if, but when object uh, detection succumbs to uh, the siren song of transformers. Uh, and I think Clip is one way that that could potentially happen. Um, in much the same way that we did object tracking with Clip, um, you could potentially have a model that identifies areas of interest and runs all those through Clip and then basically categorizes each one uh, in the same way that we were doing the classifier above. Um, and you could get a rudimentary object detection model in a very naive fashion that way. The downside is it would be extremely slow um, because you'd have to basically crop the images a thousand different ways uh, and just do trial and error. But I think somebody's probably gonna figure out how to do this in a bit smarter of a way. Um, and we even have some ideas and are, are playing around with them. Um, but I think that you will probably see this sort of thing transforming object detection soon and bringing some of that unsupervised machine learning knowledge from the realm of NLP into the realm of object tracking. Another area that you're going to see some innovation is in captioning. So um, Clip plus VQGAN was all about taking text and converting it into imagery. Uh, I think that we are probably going to have some breakthroughs in going the opposite direction of taking an image and combining Clip with a language model to spit something out um, that describes that image. Um, so this could be really cool for any blogging platform or social media platform. Um, right now they have sort of keyword identifiers that have a whole bunch of classes of keywords that they're already um, trained to recognize. But this could create ca image captions that are completely freeform and even almost human sounding. Um, and uh, I, I don't know how to do this just yet, but I think that there are some really smart people who are already working on this. And finally, an idea for using Clip is video indexing. So a video is really just a sequence of frames, and if you can classify frames, uh, you can also split up images by scenes or label different parts of the image um, based on their content, different parts of the video based on their content. Uh, so imagine searching YouTube for your company's logo and just finding all the YouTube videos that um, happen to have your product in them. Um, this sort of thing is totally going to be possible in the future, and this is really a question not of technological uh prowess or, or changing the model, but of scale. Um, it's just a matter of running enough frames through things and indexing the results. Um, so really excited to see this come to the world of video. And there's a whole bunch of other ways in which Clip is going to be used, I'm sure. It's a very general purpose and versatile model. 
So if you have any of those, I would love to hear them. If you have ideas, uh, maybe let's do a brainstorm in the comments. Um, subscribe to the channel, leave some comments below, and uh, let's figure out a whole bunch of other cool ways to use Clip and make sure that it goes down in history as 2021's most important contribution to the field of computer vision. Uh, so until that happens and until our next video, uh, have a good one and uh, happy training. Or I guess in this case, I should say happy inferring because Clip does not even need to be trained.